Hey folks, this is Rachana Ranade here and I welcome you all to another interesting shoot and release video of Encure Pharmaceuticals Limited. Well, as I mentioned, it's a shoot and release video. That does mean that it's a one take video and it may happen that I fumble upon some numbers, some data. So it's always a better practice to check the pinned comment wherein I give any clarification if I have fumbled upon some words, right? Uh, well, coming on to the IPO discussion, uh, you know, when I was coming to the office today, I overheard two people talking to each other. The first one was asking whether you are going to invest in MQR Pharma Limited's IPO or not. But the second person said that, you know, I don't, I don't know how to analyze IPOs. I don't know how to go through the 500 pager IPO document. I don't have an expertise in that. And that's the reason why I'm out. Okay. <laughs> but that is why you all are here because today the 546 pager uh, MQR Pharma Limited's RHP is what you're going to summarize. I'm going to try and summarize in like 10 to maximum 15 minutes. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm sure that in the next 10, 15 minutes, you will understand about what does the company do. You'll understand about the industry analysis. You will understand about the financial, certain risks, IPO details, and a lot more interesting stuff is coming up in the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my uh, document for that. So here you can see that we are going to discuss MQR Pharmaceutical IPOs, uh, B, uh, the RHP, whatever I'm going to discuss in today's video is nothing but a crisper or a, you know, concise version of RHP. No information has been taken beyond the RHP barring the subscription status because subscription status doesn't come up in RHP. Other than that, each and every word in my presentation is a part and parcel of RHP. We have taken the information from that, right? With this as a disclosure, let's begin. Uh, what does MQR Pharmaceuticals do? It is an Indian pharmaceutical company which is engaged into three things. Which three things? Number one, developing. Number two, manufacturing. And number three, globally marketing a broad range of pharmaceutical products across several therapeutic areas. Okay. So what are, what are the three things they are going to develop? They are going to manufacture and they are also going to globally market it. What? Different, different pharmaceutical products. And very important, they, are, they have written that across several major therapeutic areas. Therapeutic, therapeutic areas means what? Therapy means something which can give you uh, an effect which, which is like a cure. It will cure your diseases. That, that's a therapeutic effect, okay? Now, TK agreed a broad range of products agreed, but what does their port product portfolio include? It includes orals, injectables, biotherapeutics. And the amazing point is that they have a target market across 70 countries and they have a strong presence in India, Europe and Canada, okay? Now, TK, you have, uh, you have understood that, yes, 70 plus countries, uh, product portfolio includes orals, injectable, bio, uh, biotherapeutics. But if I were to understand that, which are the key therapeutic areas? So for that, they have mentioned in the RHP that it includes gynecology, cardiovascular, uh, then vitamins, minerals, nutrients, HIV, antiviral, blood related, oncology, anti neoplastics, whatever. Okay. So what have we understood? They are going to make different pharmaceutical products. It's going to be like, a it's going to be in therapeutic areas. We understood uh, that they have presence in 70 plus countries. India, Europe, Canada is the primary presence. A lot of basic stuff we have understood. We have to also understand that as per their RHP, they are a market leader in the gynecology therapeutic area in the Indian pharmacy market where they have ranked first and have 13.53% market share. And if I were to compare MQR with their competitor, the second best competitor, MQR has a market share of 1.7 times as compared to their second best competitor, right? Uh, this is in which area? This is in the area of gynecology therapy, okay? So all in all, I hope some basic points about the company are clear. I hope you have understood what does the company do. Now let's get on to the industry analysis, some very basic points about industry analysis. The overall globally, I mean globally, the uh, this space, this sector is expected to grow at 5 to 5.5 percent between 2023 to 2028 and this will take the overall pharmaceutical markets at a valuation of roughly 157 trillion INR to 161 trillion INR but this is about global growth right global growth is expected to 5 to 5.5 percent CHR what about India India is expected to grow Indian market this specific market is expected to grow at 8 to 9 percent CHR and its valuation is uh, expected to reach uh, approximately 2.9 trillion to 3 trillion rupees. Now, also talking about one more very, very, very important point. Now, why am I saying this? Uh, you'll get the link in the immediate next section, okay? But first, we have to understand that as per the RHP, it is it it has specific details like what? 
number of products that are going to go off patent and they have also mentioned how many in 2024 how many in 2025 how many in 26 27 28 blah, blah, blah. okay now you have to understand what do i mean by number of products going off, going off patent so there are two types of products that any company can actually sell okay so here you can see i have i have I have come to the next screen there are two major categories you can see here one is branded patented products and here first we will see one word is in common and that is generic products now first we have to understand what do we mean by branded uh, products branded patented products and generic products so let me just uh, go back and take you to full screen okay so that you focus right now so whenever I am talking about, let's say I am uh, myself a pharmaceutical company and I, I put in a lot of effort for some research, for development and I come across a new formulation. I will take all the necessary licenses and ultimately I get a patent for that. Once I get a patent for that, no other pharma player can copy my specific medicine, okay, whatever I have patented, okay. Now the thing is that, will I get this patent forever? Answer is no. There is a lifetime for that, lifespan for that. Typically, you can say that it will be around 10 years, okay. I don't know, the years may vary, but whatever I have read, generally it is 10 years, okay. Now what happens is that, any company which wants to manufacture a similar product or the same, with the same patent related ingredients, they will have to pay royalty to me if they have to manufacture and, and sell something which is very, very similar or, or it's same like the one that I've patented. But as I mentioned, after 10 years, what will happen? My patent is gone, okay. Now this becomes available to all the players. Now it becomes generic, okay. I think the word itself says it has now become generic because the patent has now expired, right. So why are we saying that this is really, really important? Because if the number of products going off patent keep on increasing, number of products as in number of medicines which go off patent, they keep on increasing, obviously lot of pharma players will find an opportunity to actually manufacture and sell them. Now there are two points here again, very important. Number one, the good point is that they will be able to increase the top line if more and more, uh, you know, medicines go off patent, number one, but it's a double-edged sword, right? Because it's not like only MQR will be able to do that. All pharmaceutical companies will get a get an opportunity to manufacture and sell these products. So competition will be pretty high. So we'll also have to check how much revenue for MCure is generated from pharma versus how much from branded products which are patented. Just to give you a generic information, in India generally, I'm not saying for all companies, but generally a lot of companies find more revenue from generic products. I'm talking about pharma companies rather than branded patented, okay. So now with that as a basic information, let's go to the presentation again and understand that yes, currently patented biopharmaceuticals of value nearly 190 to 200 billion US dollars are set to expire over 2024 to 2028 globally and that's the number of products going off patent as now i hope everyone will understand these will go off patent means what these, these will be available for generic now let's understand for mcure what is the overall split we are talking about the revenue split now revenue from generic products and branded products if i were to club this up this is totaling to almost 93 percent Okay, and balance barely 7% is for branded patented products and APIs. Now, if you don't know what is an API, API is an active pharmaceutical ingredient. Okay, that is basically, API is basically which has the true therapeutic effect. So, if I'm talking about, let's say, I have fever, typically what we do is we go to a medical shop and we'll say, there are crocin dena, give me dolo or whatever. Crocin doesn't have the medical effect, it doesn't have the therapeutic effect. It is actually the paracetamol which will have the therapeutic effect. So that is called as the API, okay. So you can imagine if they also have, if MQR also has a lot of APIs, then it will be a good one. Do they have some APIs? Yes. And that's what is also given in their RHP. Some of their key APIs are, of course, I'm not a person from pharma. So please excuse me if I'm doing wrong pronunciations. Uh, Didrogesterone, whatever. Ferric. Carbola, you, you got my point, right? You can, easily re, you can easily read it. So anyways, the main point here is that majority of the revenue does come from generic and somewhere around 7% comes from APIs, okay? Moving ahead, again, a very, very important point is about R&D expenses and patents. So 
again as per the rhp uh, they have mentioned that the company has five r&d facilities in india and uh, they have uh, a lot of focus on r&d as well company has been granted with 220 patents and have 30 pending patents application in several countries they have submitted 102 dmf dmf is basically a drug master file uh, that is for apis and they have also some pending with the us fda now we can also check how much is the r&d expenditure that they have done as i mentioned yes they do have a focus on r&d but if we were to quantify that now if i were to compare 2024 with 2022 yes the amount has decreased but if i were to compare 2024 with 2023 the amount has increased but if i were to compare r&d as a percentage of revenue 22 versus 23 versus 24 the percentage has been dropping as compared to sales right now coming to key risks again everything whatever i'm saying is there in the rhp you can also check that out uh, of course the moment it's pharma the biggest point is it's heavily regulated industry i've seen this with so many listed players as well they put so much effort for r&d and then you know us fda will have some question marks now what happens with this is that uh, you know they have incurred so much cost and if us fda puts certain observations or gives certain observations then their time to generate revenue from that product is postponed okay they can't start immediately generating revenue from that that time will get postponed and that is again you know one of the shortcomings not of this company of the entire pharma space is what i'm telling you it's heavily regulated okay they have also mentioned in the rhp which are the uh, different industry regulators you can see that uh, while the company has very much clearly mentioned in their rhp that they have not experienced any instance of failure to obtain and maintain these approvals and licenses in the past 3 financial years but if this happens in the future if they fail to you know get some license in the future then it may materially affect their business right now this is about basic stuff now let's uh, i mean basic stuff as in understanding what is the company do understanding uh, the overall industry understanding some key finer points about the company and now let's move on with the financials if you see our overall revenue from operations is in an increasing trend from 58000 millions to 59000 millions to 66.5000 millions this is a cagr of roughly what 6 6.5% cagr roughly uh, now if you see here overall what is the split export sale versus sale in india it's as good as a 50 50% split for the latest financial year 2024 as good as i'm saying 48 52% uh, if i'm talking about profit for the year that is one sign which is continuously decreasing from 7000 million to 5600 million to 5200 million i'm just rounding off the figures right uh, pat margin has been also continuously decreasing from 11.87% to 7.86% you can read that for yourself as well right ro be it roe be it roce be it uh, ebitda margin all three parameters have been on a declining trend and if i'm talking about ebitda in absolute numbers yes as compared to 2022 the number is lower in 2024 but if i were to compare that with 2023 it is a shade higher okay so this is about the financials if i'm talking about the valuation part uh valuation ke liye you can see here the industry pe ratio is at 40.41 but the company's pe ratio at an upper band is 36.6 okay you are my students you understand how to interpret company pe ratio versus industry pe ratio no need for me to even explain that right now comes the next part which is the peer comparison and what you can do acha by the way what i have done is that of course entire data as i mentioned has been taken from rhp but these were like two or three different tables we have just compiled that data into one single table so that it will be easier for you to quickly compare then and there itself so we have compared this company with the peers again all these peers have been given in the rhp only okay revenue ebitda pat margin eps roc na nav and ronw ronw is nothing but return on net worth all these numbers we are comparing uh, so what you have to do is you have to just pause the video and check each and every number of mqr pharma with its peers that is how you do a peer comparison right and uh, you know you can do that for all seven so as i mentioned pause take a screenshot whatever but do the peer comparison that's always a good way to analyze a company as compared to others now moving on with the objects of the company if you see here be it uh, i mean there are two major purposes or the objects of the issue number one is repayment or prepayment of certain uh, borrowings and second one is general corporate purpose now uh, is this a complete fresh issue answer is no out of the total issue of 1952 crores almost 800 is a fresh issue 1152 is an offer for sale uh, you can see here what is the price band it's 960 to 1008 
the ipo has opened up today and will close day after tomorrow as i shoot the video uh, it's uh, this is the third today only i'm shooting the video today only it is going to be released as i shoot the video you can see the subscription status uh, in totality it's about to hit uh, full subscription it's at point 8 right now uh, i've taken the screenshot almost an hour ago maybe till now it might have gone closer to 1 uh, so you can see our nii has already crossed 1 uh, be it uh, retail portion also has has hit the 1 mark so basically subscribe fully subscribe now how much it gets over subscribed in the retail category that will be interesting to see even employee quota has been over subscribed uh, has been over subscribed at 1.77 so all in all uh, as i mentioned we did start with what does the company do we moved on to industry analysis we did check uh, what are uh, the financials uh, we did understand about what is the valuation peer comparison ipo details two three important uh, new concepts you might have learned about what is patented products uh, what are generic products i'm sure you learned something new in this video as well uh, so what uh, what are you going to do do let me know in the comment section are you going to say i'm out or i'm in what are you going to say do let me know your thoughts in the comment section below i hope you enjoyed this short and sweet ipo summary if you did don't forget to smash the like button as well i'll see you all oh by the way please don't forget to check out the pinned comment as well i hope you enjoyed this till then take care jai hind and bye bye